Still, we do see the rest of the draft of GXR developed. Snap, Tiny, and Marana, as mentioned earlier. Marana doesn't quite have the arrow setup in here yet. We can see something in the offlane to kind of give the Marana value, get the arrows going. We have seen Marana's come out without that. You know, we haven't seen too much DK off. We haven't seen too much Sand King off nowadays. It's still really good to just get the range creep, get a large camp, and just build up on the EXP there. So you still have that steady inflow of level spikes down the line. Uh, the synergy in this lineup, not that strong. Again, still no arrow setup. We'll have to see if the Tiny's pause one or two. Do you see the rest of SMG's draft developed? They've got the Necrophos and Lina, along with that Monkey King Bloodseeker first phase. So kind of up in the air as to what they want as their support. Likely the Monkey King support. Uh, Necrophos, Lina, and Bloodseeker, though, does raise a question. Like, we could try to assume a Lina mid for Moon. Necrophos and Bloodseeker. I mean, one of them's offlane, one of them's safe lane. Maybe a Necrophos safe lane with an offlane Bloodseeker. Maybe Monkey and Monkey and Bloodseeker support. We've seen, I believe it was SMG with a pause five Bloodseeker and pause four Monkey Kings. Not to be strange, so you could still kind of flex both of them as supports here. Yeah, certainly could, John. Venomants are being picked up from uh, from GXR. I've been seeing this hero pop up quite a lot recently. It seems like it's probably going to be the offlane for GXR. Not the biggest fan of the hero myself, John. I think it's... In the offlane, it's a weird one, right? Doesn't have any stuns. Not the tankiest of heroes either. Very, very annoying, though, with the amount of damage you deal. And I suppose against the Monkey Necrophos, it is going to be quite frustrating to have to play against that Venomancer. Obviously, you can't underestimate how much damage this man can pump out. And I say man, but he's more of a, a snake monster kind of thing. And uh, I, I guess against the monkey, against the necrophos, hell, against the Bloodseek, it's going to be very frustrating uh, to try and play against this hero. Uh, one of the beauties of the Venomancer is you literally just use Poison Nova, throw a Gale out, have a few wards out, and you can just happily die knowing you've done your job. I wonder what kind of build-up he goes for, though. Like, do you bother going for a very early Veil build-up? Do we see something else on this offlane Veno? Is it even an offlane Veno, John? What's the plan here? Pretty open. Offlane's probably the best role for it. I, I can't see the snap for Marana being flexed this core, so it's likely as the offlane. Um, you could maybe try to get the pause one Veno back. That hasn't been out for a long time. But if they do go something like a pause one Veno mid tiny, there's room there for the offlane Spectre for Mizu. You know, <laughs> those two cores don't need don't. too much farm. Don't. So that could be a lineup that enables that if they want it. Don't encourage. <laughs> I think the. I think the Necrophos kind of puts a lid in that, though. Like, you're always going to have Reaper's Sight to punish a Spectre in the middle of it. So it might not be the best game for Mizu, but I'm trying to recall. I think we have seen Miracle play Spectre into Necrophos anyway. So mm. if he does want it offlane, I'm sure he's confident enough in his ability to not be completely caught out in the middle of a haunt and just get Reaper's Sighted down. Absolutely. I mean, uh, all jokes aside, I think the, the pause three Spectre is actually a thing. Like, it, it actually looked really legit. In a, in a pro team, you coordinate it well. It's basically like a... I mean, I say secondary pause one, but if you have a position one like Leshrac, like in your dream was playing yesterday, it, you are basically the position one from the off lane. I actually yeah. kind of liked it. I mean, uh, all jokes aside, it was actually pretty darn strong. Uh, Mizu, though, I'd say he's one of the more talented... One of the more talented position three players that, that can play these really greedy position ones in the off lane is we do have a Luna pickup now. I think the, the idea for the Luna is you don't want the monkey playing pause one here against the Venom. So I think the mm -hmm. Luna is just a better decision against that Venomancer. And the, the scaling potential against, say, the tiny pause one, if it was to be tiny pause one, which I believe it is, uh, would be better than, say, you know, against the Luna, the Tiny's not going to have the greatest of times, but I say that. From what we've seen so far with Pos one Tiny, it's very, very devastating. Like the amount of damage you deal, once you get a Silver Edge up, guaranteed crit on the first hit, you do just about 1k immediately. Mm. That's not considering yeah. the Echo Saber hit, which is going to do about 500, and we have a Sniper Picker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did call the tiny safe lane, so that's likely our sniper mid for Lackety, unless they go sniper safe lane here mm. on GXR side. I wanted to point out with SMG going for oh, the mid one Luna. Jesus Luna, it, Yeah, okay. Pause one sniper for In Your Dream. All right. We'll see how much he gets out there. I think the lane is pretty nice. Snapfire and sniper sounds pretty decent. Like 
Uh, if you have a little shredder, you can get minus armor. Sniper can hit from a mile away, try to get some headshots off. Uh, shrapnel into cookie stun is pretty good as well. The slow from the scatter blast is also really nice to keep them in that shrapnel. So there's a lot of aggression there on a safe lane you can play with. For SMG's part, closing out with Luna meant that they will run the Bloodseeker and Monkey King support duo. So I don't mind the Monkey 4. I feel like the Bloodseeker 5 is a harder sell. But then again, they, they have Wonder Games with the Bloodseeker 5 for Raji. So it shouldn't be too bad. That does mean the Luna lane might be slightly more passive. There is some synergy there with Luna Bloodseeker. Um, you could... Blood Rage her up, uh, use your active and Bloodseeker on the Luna, um, amp up her damage, amp up her attack speed, and magic damage, and you hit a pretty good spike by, say, level 6. First levels of Eclipse aren't too bad. Lucent Beam hits a little harder. So there's some value there. I, I think the control in lane, you could try Blood Right into Lucent Beam, but the stun isn't long enough. So I don't think GXR is going to be under any threat there. Mizu on the Venomancer offlane should still be able to get control and still apply his presence there. Even though the Luna's ranged, her range isn't particularly big, and the Venomancer can still play around and maybe line up for a Gale or two with Jokam. Well, let's not forget, John, SMG, they've stopped, well, they've finished basically at the top of the groups already. They're number one, and I don't believe they're going to budge at all, no matter what happens today. They are in the upper bracket as, mm. are you about to correct me? I mean, they could change around the seeding, right? Like, uh, okay. GXR is right behind them, so they could get second seed instead. But GXR is hammered in as well, so... Wait, can they? You know, it... Yeah. Oh, I guess they G could. If you GXR, are. If GXR 2-0 this, they, they take over the top seed and SMG goes to second seed, which is like, okay, they're not going to okay. be knocked off. So okay. it's, it's not the highest stakes, but maybe you get an easier opponent in the upper div if you start first. So, you know, you might okay. want to just have that easy time into playoffs here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You've just corrected me. Thank you for that, Jonathan. I did have a, a quick gander to make sure. The, yeah, you are correct. They do still have the opportunity to take over that first place spot. And, you know, it, it is a matter of you might get an easier opponent to start your upper bracket off. But as well as that, it's bragging rights, right? Like, you want to be the top team if you can be. And, uh, we'll, we'll see if they can make it work. Again, SMG, they've been looking very clean as of late. Just constantly improving as a team. I'm very happy to see it. But GXR... I believe, unless I'm wrong again, John, they are still on that massive win streak right now. Yeah, both sides are. SMG's right. on a 10-game win streak. GXR is on a 12-game win streak. Goodness. So it's either one of them gets... Uh, both of them end up with 12 if it's a 2-0 for SMG. Uh, GXR go on to a 14 streak if they do get a 2-0 themselves. And if it's a 1-1, well, both sides lose their streak. So, well, well, you know, well. you want to maintain that massive rise. And we'll see. This is the closest matchup we've got across all of the groups just based on results and this, sh this should be really tight between both teams. Oh, nice battle of strike into the blood right. Arrow's gonna be there but it may not matter. They've got Mizu. Moon of all people as well to take the first blood on the mid laner. Gonna be very happy with that start if you're an SMG fan. For GXR, bit of a rough one to get themselves started but sometimes, what can you do? You try. Yeah, it's a, it, it was a bit forced from Mizu to put his body up front. I mean, even if you don't have the best stun setups, you get the blood right off in a slow hero like that, you get the Monkey King stun, you do manage to find the damage to melt a really soft hero like the Ben Mansur. Do you see the mid lane matchup first? Alacrity on that tiny up against Moon's Lena. This one should be a little easier for Moon. You can kind of clear the creep wave from afar. He can abuse that zero base armor from Alacrity, uses right clicks to really lay on some damage. And for Alacrity, he needs levels to be up. He's reliant on the tree grab early on to secure CS. And that does have a bit of a cooldown at the first level, so the downtime can be painful and Moon's abusing that really nicely. Yeah, I do like the way Moon's playing the matchup. You know, as a leaner, you know you can get so much harass. I think you always like to point this out as well, John, but Alacrity with the Tiny at level 1, pretty low base armor at 0, even at level 2, still sitting at 0 base armor, so Moon getting a lot of value with those right clicks. And we'll see how Alacrity does deal with it as time goes on. Of course, over at the top lane, mid one and Roger going to be against Joe Cam and Mizu. For now, I'd say mid one's not going to have that tough of a time here on the Luna, unless he gets caught by a rogue arrow. But even then, you haven't got the greatest setup to to really ensure that you do land the arrow. You could argue maybe with a nice scale out from Mizu, the slow might be enough. But ultimately, mid one should be fine to just juke them out. Roggy though, he might have a bit of a tougher time with this plus 5 Bloodseeker, but all he needs to do is just keep spamming out the Blood Rides like this, and they might have a kill here on to Mizu, and they will. Roggy able to secure the kill, but in the meantime, mid lane Alacrity able to solo pick off Moon. 
which is a much bigger deal here in this mid lane. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a surprise. And Alacrity did hit his level 3 beforehand, so he did have the Avalanche toss. Lina doesn't have the greatest Dyer's HP, and he did manage to punish. He's been doing a good job in Lacrity's end, just using the tree grab when it's up to clear out the range creep to try to get some splash damage onto Moon, so he hasn't been the healthiest. And that's a good start oh, for the Tiny. This Mizu. matchup's not supposed to be that good for him. Look at what they're doing to Mizu, though, John. Just really trying to harass this Venomancer out. They want to give him the Walk of Shame back. Baraji, I dive all the way for this, and he does. Give him the Walk of Shame. Even if you are going to drop afterwards, it doesn't matter. Mizu on this offlane Veno. If there's one thing we can say about offlane Venomancer, you generally don't want to have a bad start like this. Because it does tend to drop off pretty darn fast if you do. And Mizu, I believe that was the third death of the game for him already. And it was. He's 0-3-1, and one, so it's a very difficult start for the offlane of GXR. Yeah, they've set up really well on SMG's side. Like, it's such a simple combination, but because... Venomancer has no innate mobility. Once you get the blood right off, just the Lucent Beam is enough to always land at Silence. And you do have to watch yourself. This is a very smooth start for mid one. His CS isn't quite up there, but just having those kills in lane, having those assists is more than enough to set up a good start for mid one and enable the pause 5 Bloodseeker. This is here that needs levels, that needs time to really build up, and it's already having a really great effect in that lane. Still gives us some time to take a look at that bot lane. Last lane, we haven't really taking a gander at yet. KP is on that Necrophos off lane. Uh, he does have Afu jumping around in Monkey King, looking for a rotation right now. They are up against Paulson on the Snapfire and In Your Dream on that Sniper. And In Your Dream's having a pretty good time getting CS off. There's not much KP can do to slow down, slow that down at the same time. Paulson and In Your Dream can't quite get aggressive on the Necrophos. You know, he's got a self-sustaining heal. He can just clear out the creep wave safely, build up stacks of the Heartstopper, and just kind of regen back up. Paulson going to move in now with the Cookie. KP does have the Ghost Round up at level 1, but is going to be forced to TP, and does do so. In the meantime, however, Alacrity now has been jumped by Arfu and Moon. They will be able to secure the kill. And even at top lane, Roji ends up dropping here to Mizu. So Mizu... Able to get a bit of gold back his way. Very, very important to try and catch his way up throughout this off lane. A lot of kills happening across the map, though I dare say SMG is still coming out on top. As you see Alacrity going down once again on the Tiny. It's a really great kill for SMG to pick up. Kind of makes up for Moon dying there solo last time around. So they balance out that early pickoff. They slow down the Tinies. Start, you know, just stalling out that blink for a bit more. Stalling out the Echo Saber and trying to build into that level 6 spike. Once Moon hits 6, with the Lagoon up, they could look to go again. Bit of a, a cheeky quell there from In Your Dream. Just going for a random tree cut and does actually find our foo. Won't matter anyway, Johnny doesn't really have the damage, but... That was a nice little play there from In Your Dream. I believe that was completely blind. By the way, John, I do really enjoy when you when you start using some, uh, some Australian terminology. Couldn't help but you, you're saying gander earlier. Very, very nice, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. I, I try to diversify the vocabulary, Mike. So most of the time it doesn't pay off, and I'm, I'm glad my <laughs> slightly Australian-leaning tendencies have taken over. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. But it was... Oh, here we go again. Quell is again. out on the tree. They've got the Monkey King, Arfu. He's still relatively safe, though. As KP's rushing forward onto In Your Dream. Meanwhile, top lane, mid one. He ends up going down, but it won't matter if you can get In Your Dream on the Sniper. But they won't. He does end up dropping. Meanwhile, top lane, Roji, trying to get some return revenge back the way of Mizu, but it looks like he's the one to drop. Nice. Joe Cam, able to find a double kill on the Marana. And considering the, the tough off lane that they were having here on GXR, the way they're bringing it back, it, it's really nice to see here for the side of Galaxy Racer Esports. Yeah, they're, they're just managing to get the use out of the Venom Master spikes and levels with... Level 2 Gale, level 2 Sting, the slow is pretty good now to set up for an arrow if you can land it. And it is a lot more damage coming true. It's a bit funny though, I, I don't think the state of the offlane is still in a pretty good spot. Mizu's level 4, Joe Camp's 5 and a half. So your Venmancer still has a ways to catch up, but you're on the pathway of recovery, you've got the earn up. And looking at mid one's build, he did go for the beam and blessing, so he doesn't have glaives. Even if he dips into jungle, he can't really clear it out. Nice rotation down bot lane, Moon, he shows up, and now Alacrity's there with the Avalanche toss and does get a return kill onto Moon. So they still got in your dream, and they still end up killing off Polison, but at least they find the mid laner. 
And Lacrity, he's going to take over this bottom lane for now. I think they might just allow In Your Dream to TP mid and take over that lane. His top lane, Roggy, he's going to drop on the Bloodseeker. Is now mid one. Going to try and at least get Joe Cam. The neutral camp help him, helping him out. But the Fairy Fire going to keep Joe Cam alive as mid one's been left alone again. Oh, Mizui, start of the all chats now. Voice lines are out. And this, this save lane of, of SMG, it's really starting to fall apart. Yeah, I think they're underestimating just how much the slow stacking can come true from Venomancer. Level 3 Gale, level 2 Sting, that's 10% plus 50. So if it's straight up additive, that's 60% slow. Really easy to just land a mid-range arrow there for Jukam. And they can just get the damage off. It's that big spike for the Venomancer in lane. They're pressuring the tier 1. He does not have wards. So it's not a very quick process, but it is still going nonetheless with a siege creep up. The side of SMG now needs to start building some stacks, and they will. But again, going back to the Luna build, there are no glaives, so clearing out those camps will be a bit slower, although. Well, they found Polis in bot lane. Although, he does have a, a Moonlight Shadow coming out. Sentry to be dropped, they should have him. He'll eat a fairy fire, but it won't matter. But now Mizu, another nice rotation out from GXR, right onto KB. And even with the Ghost Shroud, with the amount of poison damage you have, you are never getting out. They are unable to give the kill over to In Your Dream, but Mizu will take another now. His fourth kill of the game. And he's making me look kind of bad here, John. I said he was going to have a pretty tough game after those, those first initial three deaths. But he's 4-3-3 three, and three now. So, once again, Mizu proves the casters wrong immediately. Yeah, he just needed some time to build up. I think Joe Cam holding the lane well while he was gone was also a contributing factor. So the Marana still got a lot of EXP going and hits an early spike, plays around the arrow. I, I keep jinxing him, John. The, the moment I praise him, this happens. KP's gonna move in now. Mizu gets caught out and he gets sent right to the graveyard. Sorry, Mizu. I'll, uh, I'll stop talking about you for a moment. Let you catch up again. Joe Cam, he'll be chased down by Moon top lane. Instead though, they do find Roggy. Arrow, nice little block there, but Roggy still gonna be able to juke it out. Assassinate flying through, however, and Joe Cam able to pick up another kill on the Marana. There's now Moon, he'll try and trade, and should be able to get it as he does have the Laguna and the Light Strike array, but Joe Cam just keeps leaping away. Moon, how long do you wanna keep this search up? He won't keep it up for long. Joe Cam, he is well and truly out of there. And unfortunately for Moon, he is unable to get any so sort of vengeance for his team. Yeah, he will switch down to the bot lane with the travels. So he's going to get started on a tier 1 push to kind of trade the top. They know the top is going to fall with any dream showing up. Should, should even out a 1 for 1 tower trade. Not the biggest deal. That is going to open up more space for both cores to kind of build up their farm. Have to see when they do start to commit down mid. Mid 1 is uh, going into the glaives already. So it's a bit easier for him to clear out some of the camps and get some stacks going for himself although oh not mid one that's not the target you want to lose right now he's gonna try and tp in time and he might just make it oh i don't know if he, he he's barely safe I, I believe he may have been on about 50 hp as he got into the fountain luckily no gale tick was coming in at that exact moment for him he tps out just in the nick of time it's uh on edge does does work out. He did deny the region rune as well, so kind of going for that objective does kind of hold back Alak. He's going to be a bit low on mana to make any further moves for now. And the side of SMG is using the space well. They're playing bot, they're keeping it shoved in, and they're just getting farm on really moon. Like Luna, Melina is able to really work the lane quite nicely, build up into nice arrow. more items past travels. That's a great arrow from Joe Cam. Really nice angle he finds there. Mizu again with the voice lines in the meantime. And you know, that's what I love about these two teams. Like, in particular, SMG, they do tend to, to get a little bit BM at the end of games, especially when they're dominating. You already see GXR kind of giving it back their way as Afu bot lane. Getting very lucky that Alacrity took the wrong tree for himself. So he was one tree away from taking Afu's tree down right from underneath him. But Afu gets out. And in the end... We're going to sit at a 12 to 8, still a very slight net worthly towards SMG. But I'll tell you what, John, you look at the, the farm of mid one right now on this Lunar. It is not pretty. No, he, he's going to have to sit back and just keep trying to get farm up. No Dragon Lance up yet. Behind even Mizu, who, you know, had a really slow start to that lane. And he's still behind that Venomancer. So you need more space out. Right now, they are giving most of that space to Moon. 
and to an extent KP, although... Yeah, Mizu gets caught out. Avalanche tossed right back into Mizu and he's gone. In fact, they even found KP. He'll go Shroud, but the Gale is going to connect with the Poison Nova. Roger's going to move in and try to help out. They've got a Reaper Scythe onto Alacrity, so a nice trade now is KP. He's somehow still alive. Roger, he'll keep rushing forward, getting all the vision for his team. But is it going to be enough? Blood Rite's there. It'll lock down the Mirana, but the Assassinate will get him from In Your Dream. And now they'll rush right on to Afu. Joe Cam, he survives through all of it. And they get a one for three trade. And the irony of all this, John, is KP somehow survived through the Gale and the Poison Nova and the Urn Charge, but they still lose three anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know how much you want to really save your Necrophos for. Like, he has a Hood of Defiance, he's got the Ghost Shroud, Max Death Pulse, so there's a lot of self-regen on hand for the Necrophos. He doesn't really need backup. At the same time, once you see the Reaper's Sight out, he can't be offensive with a backup once that spell is down as well. So you have to know... Went to kind of pull back, and GXR does manage to punish. They draw them in, they lose their tiny, but they clean up the rest, and you feel a lot better for GXR. They're still lagging behind in that fort very slightly, but you're at the point where In Your Dream is catching up. He's just about 200 gold behind KP, 500 behind uh, Moon, and the sniper's hitting its spikes. It has the Mask of Madness up, going into just a casual javelin into the Dragonlance for stats, and that's when the sniper really starts to machine gun down. His right click starts to proc the javelin 70 damage coming through the headshot starts to go up more often because of a mask of madness giving the attack speed and it just becomes really hard a lot of catching that sniper goes down to afu he has to jump the tree line find the sniper in the back and hope that his team can follow through and get that kill first correction as well by the way john he had the uh he had the uh, the mithril hammer on the courier so full maelstrom coming out very soon but you are correct. I, I do think Arfu's going to have his hands full here with trying to find the sniper. This mid lane, they are starting a very slow siege with the Venoman towards. But there is going to be a big four-man smoke up now. GXR wanting to get aggressive. And you know they're looking for mid one. They want that Luna. They know how far behind he is right now. And you just want to kind of keep him down. And if you can't find him, you'd rather find Moon. But instead, they might run right into KP on this Necrophos. Mind you, he's pretty tanky right now. Has the Sanj, has the Hood of Defiance. Obviously, has the Ghost Shroud, so it's not going to be that easy to take him out on the Necromancer, or rather the Necrophos. However, in your dream, naturally, as a sniper, can hit the T1 tower out of range. Alacrity going to jump in. Nice rupture out onto the tiny. KP, however, is still dropping low, but Reaper Scythe is still going to come out in time. And Alacrity, he is just stuck under the eclipse of mid one. They'll get another kill onto Polison and Alacrity. So definitely a, a favorable trade once again, this time for SMG. But you still look at in your dream. He's still able to attack that T1 tower out of out of the uh, the tower range. And SMG, they're kind of stuck trying to defend this, but how do you defend? Yeah, they've already dropped their big ults, so they don't really have the best options to cancel out the aerial though. Mizu. Jump in on Mizu, but he's already found our Fu. They'll try to deny him off, but it will not work out. So one for one. Definitely favorable again for SMG, but now Roggy's in trouble. Assassinate gonna fly through the Death Pulse. It makes it just in time. Just in time as Moon ends up finding Joe Cam. And this is that point where Moon's gonna feel quite potent himself now. Shadow Blade up with the boots of travel. It's gonna be very, very fast and always have that great initiation with the Shadow Blade. GXR, they're gonna they're gonna have to be very wary with the way they position now as. But naturally, Moon, he's going to start hitting like a real truck. Yeah. yeah. Big issue in that push onto the mid-tier 1 was that GXR's team was split into two fronts. Uh, a few of them were hanging behind the tier 1 on the left side, and a few of them were across the ramp. So when the engagement came out, they were a bit too split up to really focus their damage out. They couldn't use their spells in the manner they wanted to. They find KP, but that's the only kill they really get that's meaningful the mid-tier one is still set to fall though 237 hp left one little shove should clear that out but gxr are just back to farming up trying to keep the farm game going outside of in your dream the other cores haven't been able to build up as much alacrities behind even mizu's venomancer at this point you really want your tiny to have more in the tank right now 
outside of just a blink. You want that Echo Saber up, you want the BKB up, so you can stand in front, not worry about uh -oh. the control, and just get your damage off, although. Oh, Moon, he kind of shows himself alacrity, though. He's going to jump in. A mid one was right behind him. He tries to TP out in time, but it's not going to work out. In fact, they can't even get Moon. Oh, a bit of a, a misplay there, I think, Alacrity. He should have seen mid one. He was farming the creep wave that whole time. I suppose on the brighter side for GXR, they end up getting that mid tier one, and they almost found an arrow onto KP. So they trade two lives for that mid tier one tower. And you have to tell Majon, is it worth? Not with losing your tiny. Uh, not very worthwhile when the tiny dies. We just talked about the importance of him hitting more items beyond just the blink because at this point the heroes on smg are getting pretty tanky it's hard to burst any single one from down the supports are both really great scaling in terms of their strength gain they've got a ton of hp it's so even they're a bit harder to take out and you just want to be able to redistribute that gold out i get that alacti is trying to look for pickoffs though and there is some pressure for him to find those kills while he's strong have to be a bit cautious oh, Wukong's command was out, but he got tossed right out of there by Alacrity, and, and that's a combination we've been seeing a lot with these tiny picks into the MKs. So in the meantime, though, that mid tier one tower dropping very low, and KP, and of course Moon not going to stick around too long to try and force it. They're not interested in a fight right now, they're just interested in buying more time for mid one to catch up on that Lunar. And they're doing a great job of it. In the meantime, Roji... He's going to tank the gank here down to that bot side. And that's a real good tank right there from Roji. As you see mid one, he was farming around that bot area. Roji's not there to tank the gank. It would have been mid one instead. Definitely very worthwhile for him to die and allow mid one all this space on the Lunar. Yeah, it's a better target to give away. They do manage to clean out the mid tier one now as well. So equalizing map control on SMG's part. GXR are still moving forward though. They don't have the best forward vision in deeper parts of this jungle. They could look to maybe just shove out the, the top lane, dollar. look for the tier two at this point. Although I, I don't quite think they're strong enough on just the Larity to get that done. They are trying to get more space out. TP's down bot for the defense though. Don't want to give that one out as well. Uh, Mortimus Kisses looking for Arfu and they're gonna find him. Arrow's gonna run right into him as well and he's gone. That's a, a great little play out from Pollison. Meanwhile, top lane, Alacrity, is being chased down, but they can't reach him for the rupture. Back down to the bot lane, though, mid one. Has been spotted, but they won't have the heroes to take him out. So they won't make the dive in. He had KP around just in case, and again, KP, he's looking like a pretty tanky target on that Necrophos right now. Definitely not the, the primary target you want to run into if you can avoid it here for GXR. But I think you've, you've got to start to get a little bit concerned here for GXR. You, you know mid one hasn't been touched in quite a while. He is still behind in your dream, but he's catching up. Do you think yeah, that mid one on the Lunar can, can kind of put up with the Sniper later on, John? In fact, hold that thought because okay. Roger's been caught out. Alacrity will have enough. Rupture's there, but Alacrity, he just kind of runs through it. No problem. Or is there? Ah, Fu. Boundless strike out, but Polison's gonna show up. Scatterblast, arrow, all gonna land. KP is there as well with mid one. They have the Eclipse up, but they'll go for the Reaper Scythe instead. And Ah, Fu's gonna die, but they'll at least get Joe Cam as a trade. But back to the question, John. Sniper versus Lunar late game. Who has the advantage? Uh, oh, Galactic. Yeah, going in for an Avalanche toss, but this might cost him. In fact, never mind, because mid one, he can't move right now. In your dream, just continues to push him back. Mid one, he'll continue to charge forward. It's not good enough though. Now KP's been caught out. Oh, it's the classic. Oh, Let's go this. kill the sniper. Look just this. look at this. <laughs> <laughs> who needs a who needs a blister, John? Why wait for tier five oh. items when you could just pick sniper? Oh, this takes me back. This takes me back all the way to some classic memes from Big Plays Inc. Reminds you of that sniper video. Still, Mizu, not having a great time there, Bot. But back to the question, Jonathan, while we have a chance. <laughs> Luna versus Sniper. I, I realize what we just saw probably answers my question. But which one wins out late game? On equal farm, I want to say Sniper, but the Luna has ways of playing around that. I think the key thing for Luna in that case is if you go for an Ags build, or if you're reliant, if your Monkey King does get the jump in the back line, 
then it can be a bit easier for the Luna. But closing that gap as Luna is just so difficult. So say you're into high ground, high ground siege can be really hard for SMG and that's what they have to watch out for. Burn bot lane onto Alacrity. Wukong's command out from our food trying to help out, but Alacrity's not dying quite yet. Moon, he'll at least get Joe Camp down. Nice light strike array back into the tiny. They've got the detection. Still, here comes in your dream, Moon. Jeez. He's just melting. Oh, goodness me. In your dream has so much damage out with that sniper. Mizu, he'll keep rushing forward, but now Roji from the backside is going to get a rupture off onto the sniper. Make sure he can't move, and now Valina has bought back. Moon's going to move back in. They really want that sniper dead in your dream. He might have to man fight this, but no. He'll run even with the rupture. He won't mind. BKB's there, Moon. He'll keep rushing forward in your dream. What are you doing, sir? He'll run in circles before he ends up going down, and now the Reaper Scythe. He found Mizu as well. And the buyback pays off. In your dream, he didn't know where to go, John. Just running in circles. Yeah, he he was kind of out of options. Once the BKV came out for Moon, he couldn't really do much about that chase. He did have his grenade up, as he has the Ag Shard, but couldn't really find the opportunity. Still, they're going to TP in for that defense. Don't want to give that Tier 2 away. Alacrity, Avalanche toss into the arrow. It's a lot of damage, but not quite enough yet. The Starfall is there. Mid one, he does end up going down, but for what cost? If they find Alacrity, it may be worth. They should, but a big avalanche toss won't be enough. Roger will tank through it. Another TP in. Polison now going to show up. Doesn't have the kisses, though. Oh, a bit of an error there as he tries to catch out Roger, but this game is getting very, very spicy as time goes on. SMG now 6k ahead, and let's not forget... There's a 10 win streak and a 12 win streak at risk here for both these two teams. And right now, GXR, they are at pretty big risk of losing their 12 win streak. Yeah, not, not a good look for them. They kind of stream in one by one for that bot tier 2 defense. It's an important tower, but you don't want to make sacrifices that big to hold on to it. Um, the side of GXR, though, I think they can, they can kind of calm down. Like, even with tier 2s down... You are still going to try to have to siege high ground against a sniper, which, as we've seen, is a bit of a task in and of itself. So, just how successful the high ground push can be against In Your Dream will remain to be seen once they do get to that point. Uh, it is a 7k lead for SMG, though, and they are collapsing onto In Your Dream here. And that they are. Moon gonna sneak right in. Balance strike there. Light strike array as well. Wukong's command out. They're gonna try and save, but no, the rupture. The rupture is out, so the four staff just ends up killing off in your dream. And now SMG, knowing that sniper's down for 60, can go right into the Roshan pit. And that sniper it is such a big deal to try and fight this Roshan out. The shrapnel just giving you all the information you need, but it's too late, I think. They're gonna smoke up, they're gonna try and make their way over here on GXR, but it is way too late. Aegis already there on Moon, and now they'll rush forward. They've got Alacrity with the Boundless. Light Strike Ray's not going to land, but here comes the Eclipse right onto the Tiny. Alacrity's just gone. Polison, he's been caught as well. He'll be the second to drop. In fact, Mizu is just trying to get the hell out of there, but he is surrounded. Reaper Scythe now from KP will get the job down as now. They try to go on to Afu, but Joe Cam, he is the final piece of the puzzle. See you, Joe Cam. Moon on a triple kill now. And a full team wiped the way of SMG. Yeah, GXR, they just keep forcing out these movements. And they never got to take care of that ward in the triangle, which gave vision into In Your Dream earlier on. And they still forced the issue to scanned out. Really good game sense from SMG to figure out that patting, of course. You'd expect your opponents to come in. Forced to buy back on the Venom to hold out. This is where it might get tricky. High ground push against the Sniper can be tough, but we've already seen what what options they have in SMG, and that's really just Afu jumping in first, getting the follow-up stuns afterwards, after that boundless strike, makes it very easy to clean up in your dream. It is a bit harder to do on the high ground, so they'll pull back for now. They hold on to the 14k lead on SMG, and 28 to Turkey right now in the game. A lot of that gold riding on Moon. Big issue for GXR is, you know, in your dream has farm, your tiny does not. I, I don't think it's too bad that Mizu's kind of lagging behind at 7.9k. It's a Venom answer. It just kind of tosses its spells out, as you mentioned in the draft, and just tries to get the DOTs on. But the Tiny still stuck on Blink Echo Saber is really the hurting point. 
Like you want that shadow blade up, you want the silver edge, the BKB to be running so you have a solid frontliner to actually do damage and distract the team from the sniper. There's no one that can do that. Alacrity's not a big enough threat that he can just stand there and just do damage. If he does jump in, he's always prone to being controlled up, and SMG just abuses that. They always focus in your dream first and just clean up, clean up everyone afterwards. That they do. Bot lane. Alacrity gonna move in. Moon, quick reaction with the BKB out. Moonlight Shadow's not gonna help as the dust ends up connecting, and Alacrity is gonna die another time as Moon is just on literal fire right now. They found another. Roger, he's gonna die, but in your dreams, been ruptured up into the Reaper site. They'll get another kill to the side of GXR, and in your dream, he might have to buy back John. He's down for two minutes right now. Costly. And it's definitely costly, as Mizu says. <laughs> They've got great high ground defense with the sniper, but they're gonna have to commit that buyback. Yeah, they, they need a shrapnel up, they need the vision down into the low ground, they need to be able to hold back the aggression from SMG. He is still holding on though, perhaps they'll just wait for Lacti and give over a couple of objectives. Well, Mizu, Aeon Disc can be prompt, there's your buyback out from In Your Dream now, it's a matter of whether SMG want to back or not. They still have the Aegis up on Moons, so they must be feeling confident enough to keep going. But no, it looks like it'll be a defensive. Wukong's command out from our food will allow his team to retreat. In the end, SMG, they get a lot of damage off. They force the buyback. And now it's just all about catching in your dream one more time. Because as, as soon as you get him, there's no defending that high ground anymore. You just haven't got enough farm right now on Mizu or Alacrity on the Tiny to really be able to defend high ground once the sniper's dead. Yep, they're just falling way too far behind in terms of net worth to have that presence, to have that scaling on these heroes. The Sniper is still in a decent spot, although he's about 2,000 and 6,000 gold behind Moon and mid one. And Alacti still way behind everyone else. So there can be some room to grow if they do just hold on to their objectives here on GXR. It's a very hard game though. SMG, they've got the control, they've got the spikes. They're eventually gonna even hit this Ags timing on mid one and oh, Paulson. Oh, Paulson. Maybe going for a bit of a creep skip there, does get caught out. Outpost to be taken back by SMG. There's Moon. He's got 16 kills now on this Lena. Just so dominant, however, they have found Arfu. Nice kill to get, Moon. Won't be able to catch anyone else out. However, towards the left side, KP and Roger now gonna show up. Alacrity's being targeted. Do you have a stun? You've got the Reapers. And that's what you want. Just knock him down and get him out of this fight. There's now... SMG looking to force even more buybacks. Arrow to set up there onto KB, but you've got no follow-up damage. Are they going to buy back? Are they confident enough to defend this mid racks? For now, it looks like the answer is no. But SMG, they might keep going. In fact, never mind the Aegis. It's going to wear off now. It might be time to retreat here. Moon, though, he's jumped in. Light Striker is down on two, but he can't follow up. Needs to run with that BKB, but KP's been caught out now. Joe Cam, no arrow to fly. So even with that very aggressive play, they still get a buyback forced out from Alacrity, and nobody dies from SMG. Yeah, and they could just wait for their Monkey King to respawn. They've got the uh, Eclipse ready to go still on mid one if they want to make an approach onto that high ground once more. I believe the Ags is almost done on mid one as well. No, he skips that, just going for the Daedalus. So going all in on just right click damage, melt the objectives. And frankly, he doesn't even need the Ags. Like, on paper, it sounds good to just have off we jump in, drop the Eclipse on him on Monkey King, and just melt the back line with no BKBs inside from GXR. Won't really help them the building push, so they just want more damage to rip through. GXR, they've committed buybacks under two big cores. They are going to have to stall out for as long as possible. Try to sit through the buyback timing so at least seven minutes of time they need to be secure to maybe force a fight. I don't see many openings on the map for them to really go outside yet. They don't have the best wards to give them information on the map. They have this really forward bot jungle ward which isn't really giving them, giving them useful information right now, SMG. They just take control of the triangle. They keep all the waves shoved out. They're building up on that farm and even if the Sniper versus Luna matchup on paper sounds better for the Sniper, 
SMG's just been abusing all their good jump and the lack of protection for a sniper. There's nothing to save a sniper here on the sports. You don't have an Abaddon, you don't have an Omni Knight, no Oracle, no Winter Wyvern for a counter fight. The sniper is basically all on its own. And the moment it gets caught out by the Monkey King, by even just a rupture on Bloodseeker, it can get a bit dicey for in your dream there. Just look at these graphs, John. Already 100% for SMG. And that, that, is, that is a pretty big stretch. 100%. And to, to be fair, they've got a 28k in a worth lead, so I suppose it makes some sense. But my goodness. In fact, they have t plus 22 levels of experience. All right, that, that's quite a lot. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a uh, big level deficit between all of them. I, I think the big issue is that Moon is level 26. And the next few heroes are like 22 from the side of SMG. The highest level in GXR is 21. And everyone else is below that. So you're not really able to get much EXP because you've lost the lane. You can't dip out to the jungle. You can't clear out the lane creeps all too freely as well. You're all kind of clumped up in the same area. So it's not very efficient. But that does tend to happen with this kind of net worth deficit. And SMG is just doing a great job of maintaining that lane status, forcing it out. We'll see the Roshan timer in about one second as well, so see if that is feasible. It is a quick timer as well, 10 seconds away. SMG could just look for Roshan and then start the high ground once more. GXR, they know. Oh, but a nice smoke break. Ah, oh, foo. Breaks the five man smoke immediately for the side of SMG. And I don't believe either team scouted out that Roshan yet, but Ah, oh, should probably go check very, very soon. And GXR now. I mean, they might have another smoke, but it's very clear what their plan is. SMG, they'll definitely be ready for it. As they do scan out the Roshan, Moon, he might just get started. And to make matters even worse for GXR, Moon, he's very close to a Satanic now. And he's already hard enough to kill at the moment, let alone with the Satanic up. In fact, he just has about enough gold. Very concerning stuff if you're a GXR fan. Another double damage room. Well, what is this? Every time Roshan's either started or finished, there's a double damage sitting there. That's how it goes. Uh, it's, been, it's been like that for a lot of our games. Good to see Tradition being held up. Uh, mid one does pick up the Ag Shard and does have his Agnims flying in as well. So you've got the Lunar Cannon, basically. And that should be really good. Just have Afu jump in, drop the Eclipse on top of him. Everyone's dead. Beautiful. We might just see it right now as SMG, they're looking to get aggressive. Move in, Light Striker Rain, Mizu has his Aeon Disc propped. We'll be able to survive, but now the next team fight, he'll be without that kind of secondary life. So a nice start already as Moon, he's popped the double damage, and look at the amount of damage he does deal to that T3 tower. When he's not missing uphill, it's a lot, but a big gobbler play into the arrow. They've got the lean on. They've got the Aegis down. However, Misu, he's trapped in the middle of all this. Roji, he might still drop, but the Reaper sights out. They've got Alacrity as well, and he's got no buyback. So they've got the Aegis down. They've got a hero down without buyback. Meanwhile, mid one almost died. I'm not sure to what. Nevertheless... It's still a pretty big advantage here for SMG. Yeah, they can still start sieging high ground. They don't have Eclipse or Wukongs, and they don't have the Reaper's Sight, but they can still get the damage off with Moon's insane. Oh, in your dream. He's been caught out, Afu. He gets the vision. Joe Camp, the gobble up play. It's not going to be enough. They're down without the sniper. He hasn't got buyback for another 13 seconds, and I believe he's still short on gold anyway, as now they move in for another. GG, well played, has been called. The streak is over for GXR, but it does continue for SMG now. 11 game win streak for SMG and for GXR. We have lost the win streak, John, but they've got one more game against SMG. And now it's all about revenge. That's all it boils down to. It was a rocky start for GXR. We saw their lane with Paulson just go off really badly. So bad that Joe Cam was level six way earlier than Paulson hit, uh, than Joe Cam, no, sorry, than Mizu hit on his Venom answer there. And SMG, now eventually GXR got some room out. You know, SMG were dropping a few fights, especially towards In Your Dream Sniper. They didn't respect the power spike of the Maelstrom and Mask of Madness. 
but they just overcome. At some point, GXR, their engagements just didn't line up. They kept streaming in one by one, and it just didn't pay off. They need to be cohesive as a team. You know, They need to play together, execute on point, because this lineup is very sensitive. The moment they dropped a couple of fights like that, your Venomancer stops scaling. Your two supports don't have the greatest stun or teamfight control, and your Tiny needed almost as much farm as a Sniper would to really have impact. So... They dropped that momentum, and SMG just managed to punish and take over. That they did, John. Of course, that does mean we are going to go to a short break. But right after that break, we're going to be back with Game 2 between SMG and GXR. And, well, like I said, John, one streak's been broken. Can we break the other here for SMG, or are they going to go on to have a 12-win streak themselves? It's MLP.Andronix5. We'll be back after a very short 10-minute break to find out. 